government set prices. Because then look at government set prices. Now here's the thing. As I said before, in my heart of hearts, I think the government has noble intentions. They really are trying to help somebody. And what they do is, they look at a particular situation and they determine that they're gonna intervene and fix something. So here's how it works. There are pretty much two ways, generally, that they can intervene. The first one is what we call a price ceiling. I might explain this. So the first one is a price ceiling. And a price ceiling is a maximum legal price set by the government. And no one can go higher. If you go higher than the ceiling, you are breaking the law. That's the idea. A price ceiling, some maximum legal price set by the government. Let me show you what's going on. There is our market. The maximum legal price set by the government and no one can go higher. That's a general idea. What's happening with the price ceiling is, here's our market. This is our equilibrium. Let's label it. Peace out. With a price ceiling, the government looks at this and they go, you know what? I don't like P star. They look at this and they go, you know what? P star as a price is too high. They look at this and they go, I don't think it's fair that consumers have to pay P star for this good or service. So what they do is they go in, they intervene, they pass a law, and they put the price in place to help the consumer. They say this price is too high, so I'm gonna go in. And I'm going to set the price at, let's call it PC then. If people want to go lower, that's okay. But legally, nobody can go higher. If you go higher than this PC, then you are breaking the law. The government is not happy with P star. They think that price is too high. They go in and set an effective maximum price. People could go lower, but you cannot go higher legally. That's the idea behind a price ceiling. Not every price that's below equilibrium is a ceiling. We're saying specifically, the government goes in and sets a price below the equilibrium. Usually the motivation is to make the good more affordable to consumers. Can you think of an example? Uh, housing permits. What's that? Housing. What is it called? Uh, it's very mm -hmm. much. A very good example is rent control. Absolutely, I agree. Rent control. And this is why I say, in my heart of hearts, I think the government's intention is noble. They look and they go, you know what? Housing is something that people need. Housing in certain areas with the price is increasing too high. And if the price is increasing that high, remember that guy, the rent is too damn high? <laughs> I'm going to intervene and I'm going to make housing affordable. Now, rent control is not so much of a big deal out here on the West Coast, but on the East Coast, it's a big deal. Out here, the version of rent control, they do have rent control in California, in some areas like Santa Monica. But the, the idea behind it is, the government goes in in certain areas, and they put a cap on the percentage increase in rent annually. So they'll say, for example, per year, Legally, if you're in the rent control zone, you cannot increase your rent above and beyond, usually it's a small percentage, 2%. So they kind of cap the percentage increase. But that's the idea. So this is why I say the intention is very noble in my mind. And I do think that's the case. They need to make housing affordable. But we are in an econ class. And we know once you intervene in markets, there's certain costs that you're going to have to bear. In fact, when the price is below equilibrium, what do we know will happen? 
You're going to have a shortage. So, the government is making housing affordable, but effectively they put a shortage in place. It's a bit of a catch-22. Once you intervene in the market, realize that you're going to effectively cause some inefficiency, irrespective of how noble your intentions are. Let me give you a scenario. This is the rent control. We're gonna set up a scenario. <coughs> Santa Monica, because some years of Santa Monica actually have rent control. The going market price for your, let's say two bedroom apartment, when you check the neighboring community, these people not in the rent control, you could be getting, based on the market, let's say 4,000 a month for the two bedroom. However, because you're in the rent control zone, the government says, you can only get $500. So the market says you should be getting four, and the government says you can only collect 500. What do you do? And don't be like my other classes who say, oh yeah, burn it down, get insurance. What do you do? <laughs> Legally, what do you do? That actually happens, selling them and turning into condos. And again, you perpetuate the shortage. So the government intention is noble, but usually in that particular case, that could happen. Make the shortage even worse. What else do you do? We just don't care about the tenants. What's that? We just don't care about the tenants. So, 4,000. Government is forcing you to collect 500. I call you up as a landlord and I say, the roof needs fixing. Do you rush over to fix it? No. I call you up and say, oh, there's a hole and it's 20 below zero and I'm freezing. Do you come fix that? You go, hell no, I actually want you to freeze because I need you out of there. <laughs> <laughs> what happens is these particular buildings in rain control zones, they become dilapidated. The market is sending a signal that these things are worth 4,000. The government is intervening and forcing you to take 500. They have distorted the market. A lot of the people, or a lot of the buildings in rent control zones, the landlord becomes slumlords. Because you're supposed to be getting 4,000 and the government is forcing you to get 500. Oh yeah, you're gonna live with a couple of rats because I'm not fixing that. There have been horror stories of whether, let's say a really old lady lives in the building because usually they live there for years. The price is saying 4,000 but she's only paying $500. There have been horror stories where the landlord helps her down the stairs because they want them out. So the buildings, because the government has distorted the pricing, the buildings can become dilapidated. So you're making housing affordable, but at what quality? You're making housing affordable, but you effectively cause a shortage. Again, your intention might be very noble, but once you intervene in markets, there are certain costs that you have to bear. So any intervention in the market, you're going to have certain costs to bear. That's one example.